Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. I was having a conversation with Awkward M recently about some of the weird ways that animals reproduce. And it got me a little curious, so I made a list for you. This is Nick Lucid's Top 10 Craziest Animal Sex List of Science of 2013. Okay, maybe that's a little long for a title. How about the Top 10 Craziest Animal Sex List of Science? Eh, still a little long. We could go with Crazy Animal Sex. Or maybe even just Sex. You know, leave some things up to the imagination. You already spoiled everyone's imagination with the first title. Yeah, I guess you're right. Whatever, I rank the list from least crazy to most crazy. Let's do this. 10. Giraffes. The male giraffe will nudge the female's private area to encourage peeing. Yeah, I said peeing. Then the male giraffe smells the pee to check for fertility. If she's ready, he'll try to straddle her. Which, as you can imagine, can be a bit awkward with their body shape. 9. Hippos. How do male hippos attract mates? By flinging poop everywhere. That's not the reason they fling poop. They do it even when the females aren't there. Hey, how'd you get my teleporter? All right, so it's more likely they're flinging poop to show off to other males. It's called a power display. Human males do it too. Actual studies have shown that the more males that are sitting at a table together, the more likely it is that they're going to have their cell phones out too. Anyway, the display just inadvertently attracts females. The resulting sex will occur with the female underwater for most of the experience. Luckily, they're good at holding their breath. Eight, porcupines. When the male porcupine finds a female, he pees all over her from about six feet away. If she squeals and moves away, then she's not ready. If she is ready, she'll encourage him to come a little closer, where she'll make him mate until he's too exhausted to do it anymore. If at that point she hasn't had enough, she'll go find another male to finish the job. Seven, honeybees. Male honeybees honeybees, otherwise known as drones, are born for the sole purpose of breeding. When the queen is ready, she flies out of the hive. The males will fly close to her and attempt to mount her mid-air. Now here's the real kicker. Upon completion, the successful male's penis explodes and is ripped from his body remaining in the queen. That male will then fall to his death due to excessive trauma. Six, flatworms. These guys are hermaphrodites, meaning they have both male and female parts. These worms actually fence with their penises to decide who will be the female. It's pretty epic, actually. Five, garden snails. These are also hermaphrodites like the flatworms, but they're a little more diplomatic about things. Their sex parts are in their necks, and each of them gets their female parts fertilized by the other's male parts. However, before climax, they shoot mucus-covered darts into each other. They're called love darts. The mucus on these darts helps their sperm survive as long as possible. Unfortunately, they're not always good at aiming, so sometimes they accidentally kill their mates. Four, banana slugs. These slugs are called banana slugs for obvious reasons. When it comes to sex, though, they have to choose their mates very carefully. If their penis is too large for their mate, they get stuck and they run the risk of the other slug chewing it off to get away. Ouch! Three, the earthworm mite. Also known as histoma merch... Histioma merchy... Histi... <laughs> It's right there. This is a mite that lives and breeds in the cocoons of earthworms. The female mite doesn't have time to wait around for a male to show up, so she gives birth to several of them herself asexually. It's called parthenogenesis. Those males grow up to fertile adults in only a couple of days. At that point, the female immediately mates with them before they die of old age, and she is now pregnant with females. Two, anglerfish. These deep sea fish are insanely crazy. The one you're seeing right now is a female, and she happens to be very adept at luring in food with her dangling glow ball. Male anglerfish, on the other hand, are much smaller and not very good at finding food. What they are good at is finding a female. When they do find one, they bite her side and latch on like parasites. Those males will no longer have to worry about finding food because their bodies and internal organs slowly fuse with the females, and they just live off her bodily fluid. Now appearing almost like an extra fin on the female, the males provide an easy source of sperm for her to use whenever she's ready to give birth. WTF nature! And lastly, the number one craziest of them all, bed bugs. The female bed bug has parts for birthing, but not for sex. When a female is ready for breeding, she finds an unsuspecting sleeping victim and drinks her fill of blood. She then returns to the rest of the bed bugs, and the males violently rape her abdomen with their sharp penises. Peni? Eh. Penises. It's called traumatic insemination. The female will likely heal from this, give birth, and repeat this process several times in her life. Like I said, crazy! So what's the craziest mating habit you've ever heard of? Please share in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.
Female horses almost made this list. If they get pregnant from one male but are around too many other males, they'll go have sex with all the males that they can. Why, you may ask? Because males have a tendency to kill offspring that isn't theirs. And the female would rather the males be a little unsure about whose is whose. That's why most bands of wild horses only have one or two males. It only really becomes a problem when we force it on domesticated horses.